I am so thrilled to welcome you here today. My name is Megan Ellis, and I am the Administrative Director of the Walt Tamati Center. The Center hosts events and lectures like this throughout the year that we want to um, bring our students and our community in to help you be most successful in the professional and also in your personal world. So today, we are thrilled to have Barb with us. She is a very sought after authority on this topic, and we are just so excited. I've seen her little table over here, and I'm very curious what we're going to get into. So you are in store for a wonderful, wonderful event. Barb is a registered corporate coach. She's the immediate past president of the International Coach Federation, the Columbus Charter Chapter. So I know she'll tell you all about that. Today is a very interactive day, so you're going to be engaged in talking, and um, it's going to be very lively. So I'm very excited to have Barb with us today. Um, we are going to be learning the kind of the what works and what doesn't, and I am not going to take up any more of Barb's time. So I'm going to invite her to join me up here. Thank you, Barb. We are so pleased to have you, and thank you for spending the afternoon with us. Thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Hold on, I'm going to grab this and get away from the podium so you can see me. Let's see, am I on? Can you hear me okay? Very good. So we are recording, so if you have an opportunity to uh, contribute, if you could speak loudly or wait till we get the microphone over to you, that would be helpful. Today's topic is what is networking? So if you would, did everybody get a drawing slip? Anybody need one, raise your hand. If you take a minute, a couple minutes, and just fill out the first couple top lines with your contact information. And on the reverse side, if you would, think about what your confidence level, your abilities, and your skills are prior to the presentation regarding networking. So take a minute and rate yourself. And we want 10 being so you're super confident, you have those networking skills, and believe me, I don't assume I'm the only expert in the room, so those of you that are 8, 9, or 10, I hope you'll really help share what you learned that works. And 0 or 1, you need a lot of work in this area. So did everybody get something? And let's just take a little survey. How many of you put 9 or 10? Okay, we have something to work with. Very good. How about seven or eight? Okay, we have a few, and I hope you'll contribute your ideas on what you find works with networking. How about five or six? Okay. And how about four or less? Okay, good. So I hope that you're all here open and receptive to learn. And I do want to say that the tips that I'm going to share with you are surprisingly simple. However, please don't discount their importance or effectiveness. So we are going to talk about that today. Uh, during, our pre during this presentation, we're going to discuss some of the common networking uh, best practices and challenges. We're going to be debunk any myths or issues that you might, might be floating around in your head uh, for networking. And hopefully, you'll, everybody will leave and discover one or two things about networking that you want to take with you. So at the end, I'm going to ask you what your best takeaways were. How's that sound? Good so far? Fantastic. OK. Uh, before we go any further, let's get a common definition. What, when, when, you, when I say networking, what do, you, what do you think about? What does it mean to you? And if you wouldn't mind, share your name as well. And do we have a microphone? Do you want to? Yeah. Hold on. We're going to give Patricio some exercise today as he runs the microphone around. So first, if you could, in the spirit of networking, we'll, we'll, we'll take both of you. That's fine. If you could share your first name. Uh, Emmy. Emmy. Terrific. And first of all, in what context do you network Emmy? Uh, looking for jobs. <laughs> okay, one of the important ones, right? Yeah. Very good. So what, when we say networking, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means talking to lots of people all the time about 
um, their experiences and asking them to share tips or things about their life and you share what you're looking for and if you have mutual things then you make a contact and it goes from there. Okay, Usually. Um, very good. And you know what, I wonder if we have anybody that would be willing to make some notes on the whiteboard so we can get a, okay, so if you could give us two, three key words with what you just said when you think of networking. So, um, mutual interests. Mutual interest. And mutual goals. Mutual goals. I like how you say mutual. That's good. Okay, and we have a gentleman in the back that wants to contribute the definition of networking. Hello. Hi. Um, name's SJ, and I would define networking this way. Um, looking to provide a solution to someone's problem or need. Okay. Okay. Looking. So... For example, I'm out networking a lot because I own my own company and I'm always looking to grow. So, okay. however, if I want to grow, I need to help someone else first. I need to serve them before I can think of myself. I would totally agree with you and that was really a valid point. And if you hear something that you'd like to remember, please feel free to make some notes. If you don't hear anything that you want to remember, doodle and we'll think that you're hearing something. Very good. So, and your name is SJ? SJ. SJ. Okay, very good. And what's your business? Um, company name? Yeah. Uh, service before self leadership. Service before self leadership. Service before self leadership. Since you are contributing, might as well give you a little PR there, right? In the spirit of networking. Good. Okay, anybody else? What do you think of with networking? Yes. Uh, hold on. We're getting the microphone over to you. Okay. Well, for, and it, and I'm sure you do. In the, I think for the recording, the microphone will help. Go ahead. Um, my name is Jerry Miller. Hi, and Jerry. I'm with Drive Patrol. Um, I've been in business forty plus years, and the two or three things that I take away from networking is one, you have to be bold but professional. I like and that. And when, when I say that, never be afraid to ask a question. Always listen. Because if somebody makes a comment, if you don't hear the entire sentence or three or four words and not looking at them, you can misinterpret their question and then you may look foolish. So always ask the questions and always listen. Ask the questions and listen. Well said. 40 years of experience we're sharing. So this is a real exchange of emerging careers. Some of you may be looking for your, stepping for your first career job out of college, anticipating that. Some of you may be gleaning some of Jerry's experience with 40 years in the workforce. Thank you for sharing that. Good. Anybody else? Networking. Okay, I'm going to ask Allison if you would. I got your name early, so you're... Uh, there's a definition by the American Heritage in your pamphlet, so if you would take that and share it and see if we could all agree on that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Allison. Yeah, page three at the top. Okay, so we had mutual, and we talked about providing solutions, mutual support, so we were hitting on some of the elements of networking. So for today's purpose, can we all live with that and what was contributed earlier? Sound good? Okay, so how many of you believe that money grows on trees? audience full of skeptics here, huh? Well, I'm hoping by the end of today's presentation with applying some effective networking skills that you have some belief in that. So on page three, number one at the top, let me just give you a, a little bit of, let me give you a terrific fact that'll help frame networking. So this is point number one, executives 
on page three near the top under discuss, executives with 50% more professional contacts above the average had a salary of 3.5% or $15,000 higher. So plant networking seeds so money grows on trees. Now, another study, and this was according to the highest income earners. There was a survey done a while back, and these professionals earned over $200,000. And the single most critical factor in determining the value of your network is the breadth and depth of connections of people that will put their name on the line for you. So think about it. Just take a minute and think about how many people would really put their name, their reputation out to back you. Uh, Emmy, as you go, get ready to embark on that job. Think about how many people in your network would attest to the fact that you're a good hire, that you're responsible, that you have the skills that you say that you have. And building that network over time, that really counts. And I'm not just talking about getting hundreds of contacts on LinkedIn. How many of you have a LinkedIn profile? And how many of you have, uh, are active on Facebook? So I'm not just talking about adding lots of likes. I'm not just talking about building untold numbers of connections on LinkedIn. I'm actually talking about building a network of people that you provide that mutual support that would put their name on the line for you, that you invest in that relationship over time and they get to know you. And that really is building your network through the act of networking. As a matter of fact, there was a researcher uh, and a social scientist that did a study called The Benefit of Weak Ties. And he talked about how important it is not just to maintain contact with the people that you see every day, those that you're working with and those that you're in school with, but the weak ties are those connections of people that you met and you nurture that relationship and you don't see them all the time, but there's some sort of a purposeful intent to stay in contact with them. The reason why those relationships are so extremely valuable is because the people you hang with all the time, we tend to think like those people. And people that are in different circles or a different industry, different careers, they can really provide tremendous value to exposing you to different experiences, different opportunities, and different perspectives. Does that make sense? Fantastic. So, there we go. This looks like, and, and by the way, I am a professional executive coach. I do facilitation and training in companies. I've done contract work for Fortune 100 companies, and this gentleman, on the screen may look typical of some of the executives that I see in corporations today. So when we think about networking and what makes networking different today, and I'm on point number two, there is so much more clutter. Um, there's so much more competition for people's attention. And I'm thinking about, as I was you know, coming here today, thinking about having the opportunity, and I'm so grateful to speak to you, I was thinking about that there may even be some people that you'll be interacting in the workforce with that actually communicate totally different than you're used to communicating with your peers and the people that you w work alongside with. They may actually talk on the phone, and that may not be, that may not be an, a regular mode of communication for you. Um, they may or may not text. I hope they do. I know I wouldn't be talking to my kids if I didn't text. But so, and, and the average worker in a corporation today, the average professional, is probably getting about 250 emails a day. So, Emmy, when you go for that job, if you don't hear back right away, I want to level set your expectation that you may, be, you may be approaching someone that has an awful lot on their plate to carry. 
Can you think about anything else that's maybe different as you go to network? Jerry, you've been in the workforce 40 years. What makes it different today? And the microphone's coming. Um, I think one of the biggest issues today is people don't know how to communicate. Okay. Um, they've lost the ability to communicate verbally because okay. of texting, because of email, et cetera. But in that same vein, the communication networks goes back to your ability to write. Whether it be a handwritten personal note, if you want to send your resume to somebody, email it, but follow it up with a handwritten note in your resume and write on the envelope. It gets people's attention and it shows that you want to be different, not a me too. So there's some, there's some pointers, uh, again, from the trenches, from Jerry. Thank you so much. I will, take, I will tell you, it takes a lot more prospects today. Those of you that have your own business, it takes about 50% more prospects because there is so much clutter and so much more effort to get through to people. So it does take that time. Now, I put this up here just to clarify that I am talking about networking, not twerking. And um, so I wanted you to know that. And I'm on point number three, what networking is not. So networking, we talked a lot about what it is. I do want to make the distinction that it is not attending events and running around and handing your business cards to as many people as possible. Uh, networking is more about the quality. I call it a having a satisfying conversation, one that you really have the opportunity to, to to talk and converse. And actually, before we leave, I have a couple tips on how to make that happen. Networking is not, a, 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 and I'm a, a little bit against the conventional thinking on this. Uh, people will commonly say, get your elevator pitch ready. How many of you have heard that? Yeah, especially if you're approaching the job market. I say pitch the pitch. That really doesn't that doesn't cut it anymore. Today, you really need to be able to have the skills to engage people quickly, to um, focus your interest on them and find out what they're about, and to have what I call it, that satisfying conversation. So a standard pitch, that doesn't work too well anymore. People, people sense that, and that tends to repel them. And if networking were a cooking method, it would not be microwave cooking it would be a slow cooker. So you, you do want to think about building relationships over time. It does take nurturing, and networking is a two-way street. So let's talk about what kind of networking events have you already attended? I'm very curious about that. OK, right here. We're, let's start over here, if we don't mind. We'll come back to you. There are uh, dinners before lectures, often um, over in Bennis rooms. And so there will be people, um, adults and professionals, that are there that you can network uh, with before the event starts. OK. And you are? I'm a student, Tyler Wake. Student, Tyler Wake. Fantastic. Tyler, what are, what are you studying? Math um, and econ. OK. Do you have an idea how you might be pursuing that? Yeah, through um, probably research, um, either like going on to grad school or um, doing some research and then maybe going to grad school after that. OK, very good. So, di so networking dinners. Um, what are some other networking events that might occur in your life? I was going to say everybody who's here is this is a great opportunity to to network or going to um, events that will help you in the professional world or personal world. And that's a great example. And and just point in self, I don't, can anybody make any observation as people came into the room? What were the tendencies at this networking opportunity? Tyler. Oh, we'll let you say that in the microphone. Not to talk to each other. Not to talk to each other. So it's kind of what I observed is a lot of heads down, you know, get centering ourselves, getting in our seat, making sure there's plenty of distance. And so 
um, networking, once we understand the benefits, we can look for opportunities and it doesn't need to be a big formal knit labeled networking event. It really can be uh, starting small, practicing right in the places that you go so that when it really counts for that career job, some of these networking skills have become second nature and they don't feel so awkward. Does that make sense? So good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And I think Steve, was it Steve? You had a network. What kind of networking events do you experience? Um, over the last couple of years, uh, as I've been growing my company, I can think of four examples. Um, number one, in Columbus, you have the uh, Big Fish Networking. Okay. Uh, number two, you have Columbus Business First. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is you have the Meetup platform for the micro meetings. Mm -hmm. And then number four, you have what are called business referral groups, one of which operates right here in Delaware. An example would be a BNI. Okay. So those are four examples I can think of, and I personally participate in all of them, and I find them to be all very valuable. And, and again, when you go to the networking event, the best opportunity, and those are labeled networking events, they're set up for the purpose for business professionals to, and, and emerging professionals to have an opportunity to get to know each other, to build relationships, and over time to see how you, we can help each other. It's a two-way street. So those are some specific examples. So again, I can say networking can happen in a very formal way at an event that's designated, could be very large. I personally have found the events where there's, you know, three, four hundred people and everybody's passing cards. That's a, a bit daunting and I'm really an outgoing person. I like people, but that is not my favorite place to network. And I think that's a good point for all of you is to find a place where you can network, where you feel you can be yourself and to be comfortable and that you can expand your circle and meet people. And network can happen really informally like a a few months ago, I was speaking at Battelle, and I was at getting my nails done the day before, which I wish I did yesterday for this anyway. Um, and the person next to me, I started talking about how I was speaking at this event, and here she worked at Battelle, and her boss was like the contact that brought me in. So, whoops, you, you never know where you're going to meet someone that may have a connection that ties back to your career. Uh, point in case, don't say anything you wouldn't want repeated at those kinds of casual places. So networking can happen either way. So let's talk about, and I think we're on point four at the bottom, if I'm correct there. Point four, page three at the bottom, preparation for the event. And I'm just going to give you a couple quick tips for preparing for the event. Um, when you are networking, if you are going to an event and you know that you're going to, what, what, what industry are you looking for a career in, Emmy? I'm in international trade and foreign language services. Okay, so do you have any clue where you might network to meet people that could get you some contacts in that industry? Typically, I look on translator interpreter boards on LinkedIn um, and look for events relating to international trade, so like um, international trade talks, people who present at the university on the subject. Um, but I'm kind of limited by my lack of transportation, so most of my networking is either internet. It's going to be um, virtual trade right yeah. now. Okay, got it. <laughs> virtual international so, trade. So as you, even, even taking um, the, the perfect example, someone coming to the university that's speaking on the topic, they obviously are in that industry and they have connections, a great idea is to set up a Google Alert for the person you're about to see and find out what they're about. You know, networking is all about putting your interest in that other person first and follow them. If I'm going to speak at a company, I will set up a Google Alert so that I can see what awards they have, what's been in the press about that company, and I follow uh, so that when I go in, I have some insights. A quick story, I was meeting a professional that I did not know and I had my Google Alert set, and I found the quirkiest thing. I found out that she liked a certain brand and a certain flavor that was pretty hard to find of potato chips. So during the first meeting, I went and got her a bag, and I gave that, and I'm pretty sure I made an unforgettable impression because I took the time to learn about her and bring her something that she had posted online that she has no resistance to. So again, that's, that's one way that you can speed up that developing that connection that makes you stand out in the crowd a little bit more than other people for preparing for the event. Another thing you can do is, 
if it's an organizational event like Steve mentioned, a lot of them will post who's registered. You can try to find out who is coming to the event in advance, and you can look them up on LinkedIn. You can do a search, and you can find out a little about them. So you're walking in with a bit of intent and a bit of knowledge, and again, focusing on what might that other person be interested in that you could bring value to them. And I will tell you, those of you that are in school right now, there isn't a professional in the workforce that isn't or shouldn't be eager to find out what's going on in your brain and what you know, because you're exposed and live with all the technology and, and the latest studies that are happening through the college. So you have a great trade-off. And in corporations today, there's a, a, a lot of movement to mentor um, CEOs with fresh out of college, so they can, you can have that exchange of information. You want their experience, they want your fresh eyes. So always realize what you bring to the table. Comments, questions, thoughts? Okay, so prep for the event. Those are a couple things you can do. Positioning at the event. So you walk into these events, um, and let's, state, let's say this is a stated networking event, or an event where there's a, a larger crowd of people. And you walk in, and what are the typical feelings that you might be thinking or f experiencing? Can you imagine? Go ahead, Emmy. I'm usually overwhelmed because there's a whole lot of people and everybody's talking and it's loud. Okay. And so, yeah. Good. Thank you for, I, I really appreciate you being open and honest about your feelings. That helps us to kind of get under the the top layer and talk about what can really help. Any other thoughts that run through your mind? If I said tonight we're leaving here and we're going to a networking event, you're going to have an opportunity to meet people from the greater Columbus area that are very successful and may really help pave the way for your future. What would be running through your mind? Yes. Oh. Well, wait, I can grab this one. If I'm in a large event, I would position myself as they came in the door because that way I can identify who I know that's coming in and say hello and so forth. If you um, sit over to the side or in front or something, you're not going to see who's coming in and what's going on. That was a, a wonderful tip. What is your name? Uh, Patricia Miller. Patricia. I call, I have two names uh, for what Patricia described. The first one is act like the host. And I did this at a conference. I was a, at a conference last summer, and I didn't know a lot of people. As a matter of fact, it was one, it was a new one, and I thought, oh, I haven't been brand new at a conference in a while because it was resurfacing all those feelings of, that Emmy described of feeling a little out of place. And so I stood as people were leaving, and, and, and when they were coming, I kind of stood near where the host was stand, and I said, thank you so much for being here, and people right away automatically started talking to me, and they thought I was part of the committee that put the event on. So act like the host rather than, sh and, and the opposite of that is the shrinking violet, or shrinking victor, and that means that you're like setting off to a corner by yourself, hoping no one will notice you. And, and even though it feels a little awkward, what you want to do is, you know, have people gravitate to you. Emmy. Isn't there a medium between those two options? Because, like, I hate being the host. Like, that is not where I want to be. But I also know that being a violet isn't a good thing. Yes. Um, because, like, that obviously defeats the point, and then you leave feeling really discouraged. So what, or maybe this is a better question for everybody who's involved in networking, what do you do that's a medium of those two things if you're uncomfortable with like drawing that much attention to yourself? Well, Emmy posed that to the group, so I'd like to hear from someone else, but I do have some tips that will help you as well. So does it, would anybody like to respond to Emmy's question? Because certainly there is a spectrum, and the most important thing is whatever stance you take with networking, you want to put yourself in the, in the most comfortable, feeling good, um, tapping into your confidence as possible because otherwise, even though you're posing, you may be repelling others. So, Jerry. For the younger generation that's here, um, and I mean that in a positive way, not as a negative way, is 
use your Facebook skills with LinkedIn. There's a difference though. On Facebook, people have a tendency to be real happy. They'll post something that they went to a great party or a concert or whatever it may be. In LinkedIn, it's professional. So whatever you post, be careful what you say, what pictures you present, your selfies, whatever it may be. Going back to how do you present yourself, you have to be bold and brash, but not negative. And what I mean by that is if you're out talking to groups or at a party or whatever, yes, you want to have a good time, but be careful on your verbiage, be careful on your position, and the position could be how your body language is. And that, that's and it, a perfect point for me to jump in, may I? Yeah. Let me, let me jump in right here, because that leads to my next point. So um, my slide says, may I have this dance? And I'm going to give you a couple very practical, simple tips, and it has to, let's start with body language. Amy Cuddy is a social psychologist, and she's done research on how we access our most confident self. And she does a lot, especially with women, and she talks about when you walk in a room and you're not, you're not in, in tune at that moment with your confidence, to go ahead and stand like this. Now, you may not want to do it so overt when you're in the room, but... Go ahead and look up on YouTube, Amy Cuddy's uh, research on body language and see if you can't glean a couple things that you could modify that would work with you. So for, first of all, it starts with that mental psych, right? And the other thing is when you walk into a room, notice social patterns that emerge. So you'll notice that people tend to, and I think it's pretty true even if we look around here, people tend to, to sit or stand in groups of one, two, or three. Hmm, what a coincidence. So when you walk into a room and you want to be expanding and developing your networking confidence, right away look for someone who's by themselves. They are probably wanting to talk to someone else. So you're going to be providing them relief if you go over to them. The second opportunity is to look for people in twos. When people are in twos, if they're standing facing each other, that's more difficult to break in. However, if they're in twos and they're standing in a V, one person here, one person here, here's an open angle for you to stand and address the conversation. And the third uh, pattern that, that emerges in, in social settings is people in threes. And people in threes tend to either stand in an O, which is closed, harder to break in, so look for those that are standing in the U formation and at the open end of the U, it gives you a place to go up and to address the group. So again, just really practical, is that, does, is that helpful? So just some of this knowledge gives you where to go. And remember, just like when dancing, where you would go up to the person leading the dance and address them and say, may I cut in, when you're going up to a group of two or three, uh, look to the person who was speaking last and say, may I join the conversation? And you'll find most times people will welcome and let you in. So that, that's a practical tip with um, a best practice for networking. Let's look at page three, um, number four. And this is my mom. And my mom passed away a, uh, 2010, four years ago. I'd like to share a story about my mom because she, she really was never in business, but she taught me so much about networking and being successful in business that I want to share one of the best practices that my mom taught me. Now, my mom was actually, we put 92 on her death certificate. She was really 93 and, and passed away a few days short of 94. So she was an old person uh, who never grew old. She was an elderly person who never grew old. She had a wonderful stance on life. And one of the things that my mom taught me was how to connect with people. And of course, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but I'm on the short side, so uh, that was, and I was quite awkward as a preteen. So my mom was always working on my confidence. Put your shoulders back, put your head up, put a big smile on your face. 
you know, you don't have to be the best looking person in the room, but be your best. And she would drill this over and over. And I'm so grateful that she did. It's been very helpful. But a few months before my mom passed away, we uh, picked her up. And at this point, and her goal was to live independently. So she was in an independent apartment. And she was too proud. She could barely walk, but would not use a walker. So we would help my mom, and we got her at the apartment. We got her down to the car, and boy, my husband, Alice, you know how he, he helped get mom into the car. And how many of you have seen Guy Fieri's um, Dives, Diners, whatever that show is? Yeah, so my husband saw a, sh a place in Pittsburgh. I'm from Pittsburgh. I see Steeler's sweatshirt there. Okay, good. The rest of you, let's not hold this against me, right? So... Um, we get mom and we said, we're gonna take you to the south side. How many of you have been to Pittsburgh? Okay, the south side is like your hard working core people, right? Um, so we went to this place and it was on a side street and it was on a Saturday afternoon and I, we, get, we get to the door and I get mom out of the car and we go up there and you look inside and it's all dark. And um, it, was, it was a bar and everybody was drinking. And I go, I go to turn around and said to my mom, no, this isn't, the place for you and she goes oh no let's go in you know so I'm figuring it you know 92 we didn't fight her too much we go in and I look at the very back of the bar and there is a table that's empty for four people and everybody else is like at the bar stools and sitting around the front of the bar and I go to help her to go back and she goes no 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 I want to sit here here's somebody that could hardly walk, but here we are hoisting her up onto the bar stool, and she just jumps right in. Immediately, my mom started networking. She was connecting with everybody, and that, the bartender absolutely loved her spirit. He goes, whatever you want, it's on the house. And so right away, she's bombing a cigarette. And by the way, I'm not advocating any of these behaviors. There's a point to this story, okay? Um, and so she's bombing a cigarette. At, again, at this point, we couldn't stop her. And she just starts connecting. She found something to say with the guy over there and the person there and the person next to her. And pretty soon it's one big conversation. And we just had the best time that afternoon. And, you know, as we walked out, I, I, was, I, I said, Mom, what made that? You know, she said, this was so much fun. I said, what made it so much fun? She said, it reminded me of when I was in college. So I don't know what mom did in college. But, <laughs> but that story reminds me to tell you what a Harvard business study has proven, that people that smile draw other people to them. When people smile, they draw people into the conversation. And that helps people connect with you. It reduces that awkwardness, and it builds your confidence. And my mom remind me that that is not a stance we put on our face just some of the time. It's something that we really work and practice, that we walk around with that engaging smile so people want to connect with you. And I hope that if you take nothing else away from today, you'll remember how the power that you have with all the other skills you can learn is just simply to smile, and that draws people to you. I love that story because it connects me with her. Now, um, on page, we're on page four, and, well, let me just say, page three, another best practice is to follow up. I do a whole seminar on follow up, so I'm not going to go into the how-tos, but I did want to remind you that after you meet people, it is important that, that you connect, because the average professional relationship takes six to seven times before it forms, six to seven meaningful conversations. And if you're connecting with people initially online, it takes about 16 contacts. So follow up and being intentional to build those relationships is important. So we're on the section of debunking common networking concerns. One that I hear all the time is that people are afraid they will come across as she, yes. And you know what? How many of you have ever thought that? A few of you? Good. Um, or not good, but I, I under, I'm, we're connecting. Not good that you felt. When that concern happens, that you're afraid that you will come across as pushy. Remember that where is the focus? On you inward or on the person in front of you? Where, Tyler? 
on the other person. Absolute, oh, when, wait a second. When we're thinking, are we pushy? Is the focus on us or the person in front of us? On us, it's inward. So when we hear that narrative and we start thinking, oh my goodness, I wonder if I'm pushy, what you want to do, Andrea, is just turn it around and focus on the other person. Just make a mental note. And remember that if you're interested in them as a person, it's likely going to debunk that you will come across that way. Some other common challenges that people tell me about networking is they are afraid or fearful inside. And remember, as an executive coach, it's when you hear that voice inside saying, I'm, I'm fearful I will get a no, or someone will reject me, or they won't be accepting. And again, just a quick little trip, a tip with that is when you hear that voice saying, oh, I hope I'm accepted, I'm fearful of being rejected, and even with that job search and such, remember to turn around, and, and if you get a no, to move on. Easier said than done, however, if you can remember this little tip at that time, it will be helpful. What other challenges might you incur when you're coming up with the thought of networking? Any? Yes, Allison, go ahead. Allison told me before the event that she's here on the behalf of her mom, so. Um, I know myself, I can get a little bit confused sometimes and forget to follow up with a networking um, connection, and that gets a little bit daunting. You know, when I network with someone, I'm really afraid that I'm going to drop the ball and not follow up, and then I'll completely lose that or burn a bridge and not be able to get it back. Okay, and so your question is? How to avoid, how to, how to remind myself to, to keep networking and continue and not give up on it. Okay. So again, networking, like all the other skills we learned starting from how to walk or how to ride a bike, means we first have to allow ourselves to do some things poorly before we get good at it. So don't, you know, if you're too entirely tough on yourself and you're beating yourself up if, or holding yourself back from the fear, it's not going to be all that helpful. So allow yourself that. And then the second part of that, I would say, is to get a system. You know, if you're collecting someone's business card, have, a, have certain steps that you do every time you collect a business card. Um, it might be writing notes on the back of it. It might be following up with a quick email or a text after you met them saying, great meeting you, looking forward to seeing you again. If it's somebody that you have a, con um, a sense that you want to pursue uh, an ongoing professional connection with them, find some intentional way to see them again. Is that helpful? Good. Any other questions? I want to make sure that I don't just stick to my agenda and miss the opportunity to hear wh what might be on your mind relative to this topic. Yes, Jerry. Okay, hold on. I think we're getting a microphone to you. Think of David and Goliath. A little person, a small man, small woman versus Goliath that was could be a basketball player that's seven foot two. You put your pants on just like they do. But the point is, don't be afraid. You're going to make mistakes, but learn from them. And I mean, I have grandchildren that are in college. So use little things from your iPad to Little simple things like this, if you're going to collect business cards, where you're going to have all the business cards together, or you're going to have them in your stuff in your pocket, but also have them on your iPhone, whatever it may be. Keep records both ways if you can. Okay. More practical advice. Thank you for sharing. I know we're, we're, running, we're running out of time. I probably have more to share with you than we can fit into this um, hour that we are together, and I'm so grateful. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to connect again. But I did want to say that whether I get with some of the most very successful CEOs and, and senior management and entrepreneurs, and I, when they get one-on-one -on -one with their coach, I always find um, that their inner chicken comes out. 
And I <laughs> want to encourage you that if you're, you're inner chicken is ever squawking, that to take that opportunity to talk back to it and to know that um, you can take charge of that little inner chicken voice that is telling you not, not to or to play small. I'm going to leave you with a quick strategy on point number seven. When you're out networking and you're wondering what to say, remember to form relationships. And this is an acronym and no matter how much experience I have, there are sometimes I meet someone and it, I feel a little inhibited or not sure what to say next. And the form relationships acronym is it's something that works every time. So what, what you want to do on page four at the bottom, point number seven, is remember F stands for family or friends. O stands for occupation. R stands for recreation. And M stands for memberships. And this is an acronym that can help you as conversation starters. So you're next to someone, you, you're not sure what to say. You start with, so what's family for you? I like what's family for you because then they might tell you about their dog. They might tell you about their cat. They might tell you about their aunt in Nebraska. But family can be something that pretty most people can start spinning a conversation. Occupation, where do you work? Where would you like to work? Where have you worked in the past? Recreation, what do you like to do for fun? What movies have you seen? So it's anything, recre what sports do you follow? Anything that can get a conversation started. And memberships, you know, what organizations do you belong to? Which ones have you checked out? So this is a really quick tip that can help you with conversation. I would encourage you to use this, maybe as everybody's um, leaving today, you'll think of somebody you don't know here, say hello to them and practice one of these questions. And I can go ahead and get you any of the blanks we didn't get to fill in today, like the most taboo topics that you want to stay away from when you're networking, starting out with credit card debt, I would add the, to that student loan debt. and. Um, Love life details, you don't want to go in with people you don't know with these topics, they're the most taboo. And I'm going to close with a story. And like I said, if you want any of the tips, just put on the drawing slip that you'd like the tips that I didn't get to today and I'll follow up in an email. So this story has to do with my husband. He's a teacher. And a couple years ago, he was downsized from his job. He teaches special ed. He teaches the kids that get kicked out of school, and he really helps them go back and get their GED. And he, he loves his work. And one day, he picked me up, and he just looked like he lost you know, all the, all the color in his face. And I said, honey, what's wrong? And he said, they let me go. They let you go. I couldn't imagine. He was so dedicated and such a valuable part of this staff. How could they let him go? And of course, he took it completely personally, and he was, he was devastated. So he asked me to help him with his resume. And we started listing all the things that he had done, of which had he been keeping his resume up each year, P.S., it would have been a lot easier. But anyway, we went back. And we were going through, and we put everything we could think of on his resume. And we got to the end, and I was looking it over, and I, said, and I, and I was thinking about something I knew about him that would set him apart from everyone else. And I put on his resume, on the bottom line, cleaned the fish tank. He was at the school seven years. And so he got called a couple weeks later for an interview and he goes into this interview and it was a panel interview if you can imagine seven or eight people that's two eyeballs per person all staring at him firing one question after another then after another then another question and he's trying to respond and thinking about situations and stories that illustrated his experience and his examples and all of a sudden about three quarters away through the interview the room got quiet 
and everybody is still looking at him. And he, as he described the story, he goes, honey, I could feel the balls of sweat rolling down my back and I'm trying to act cool about it, right? And one of the administrators turned to him and said, Mr. G, of course, that's what he goes by with Gerson, right? Mr. G, what's this that I see about cleans the fish tank? And all eyes looking at him, long pregnant pause, silence in the room, and he's thinking how to say, and he kind of puts his head down and looks up, and he said, I was at the school seven years, and nobody wanted to clean the fish tank. So I did it. Long silence. Of course, he's uncertain what anybody is going to think about him doing this. And suddenly, someone else said, Mr. G, how do you feel about box turtles? And guess what? He got the job. So my point in closing is, we can give you all kinds of tips and strategies and do this and do that, but what is your cleans the fish tank? How can you get in touch with that special gift or service or spark or knowledge that only belongs to you? And when you take that to each networking event, and you make those satisfying conversations and stay in touch with those connections. Hopefully now you might see how money can grow on trees. So I'm going to give you a moment and I'd like you to fill out both sides of the drawing slip. And if you enjoyed today's presentation, one of the greatest gifts you could give me is a little testimonial that I could use on my marketing material or my website. And I will actually have a door prize drawing over here. I have a bag. And the gift value is somewhere between a piece of bubble gum and a trip to Hawaii. So you want to fill out both sides, every question on that drawing slip, just in case this is the time that the Hawaii trip is given away. Uh, most likely it isn't, but just in case. Thank you. Thank you so much. And while we're doing the drawing slips, although we, I'm not encouraging multitasking, if there are any questions or comments, I would be very curious. Thank you. Anybody want to share a takeaway, something you'll remember from today? That's another gift you could give me. Anybody? Takeaway? Do you have one? OK. Let's hear it. I'm sharing my microphone. Um, I loved your story about smiling. I think that's really important. And walking into a room and getting attention, the right kind of attention. Right. Thank you. What's your name? Houston. Houston. Cool name. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. Everybody could at least give some insight that you got. You spent almost an hour of your life with me. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, Emmy. Ah. I liked your goldfish story. Mm -hmm. I made me feel so much better about job searching. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. Be you. Yep. And then you, you're sure you get hired at the right place because they hired you. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, please do. I would just throw out and remind everybody that every single person has value that you meet. So if you're, let's say, looking for a job or trying to get a new client or customer, just because that first interaction, it may not be, oh, this is the person in my job field. Five years down the road, if you have followed up and stayed in contact and kept your information updated and kept updated with them, they might be that key person that then leads you to that next step. Absolutely. Thank you. Remember the, the law of weak ties, someone that you're not seeing all the time, but you keep in touch with. What other, what other takeaways? Anybody? As soon as we get all the slips, I'll stop asking. <laughs> How's our timing? Are we good? Patricio, are we okay to have our drawing? And, and I will hang around a little bit if any of you wanted to come up and discuss your takeaway, but maybe you didn't want to say it in the group. I certainly respect that.
Okay, here we go. One more. Okay. This, this is my real live chicken. In some presentations, I actually do stamp on it, but I figured in a college there might be too many vegetarians that could be offended, so I didn't do that. Stamp out that inner chicken. I did want to let you know I'm an author of a book, Email Marketing Simplified. And so um, you can check that out if you want to keep in touch with your contacts. You can do that. And I do have a list. Oh. Here's my key tips, in case they weren't obvious. Uh, let's see. Dr. Simons, would you like to read them? Help us out. I will if you want me to. Please, go ahead. Plant seeds. Money grows on trees. Cut through the clutter. Pitch the pitch. Prep, positioning, and post. Best practices. Slow cook. Give, it, give to get. Smile. Challenges. Stamp out your inner chicken. I love, I love that one. People serve different roles. F-O-R-M. Does everybody remember what those are? What's F? O. R. M. Good. Build your personal strategy and be yourself. Well done. Okay, we're going to have that drawing. And here we go. We ready? One more. One more. Okay. Did I get everybody? All right. All right. Do you want to pick one? Turn I'll them over. Them out and okay. You can do it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> and the winner is Lily. Come on up here, Lily. Come on up here. Okay, Lily, open it up and let's tell everybody what they missed. No. Okay. You have, what's the packet first? This. What is this? Can you, other side? It is a money plant seed. So money does grow on trees, see? My point exactly. And this certificate, it gets you a free download copy of my book. All you have to do is email me and put in the subject line that you were here as the drawing winner and you get a free download copy of my book. Thank you so Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you everybody. I hope you had a nice time. <laughs>